I've prepared my clay a little bit uh, ahead of time. I've wedged it to make sure that uh, there's no air bubbles in it and it's nice and smooth and homogenous and ready to roll. So the first step is called centering. And you know it's there when you feel it's spinning nice and smooth in your hands. And there's no, no lumps and bumps. And when it's centered, I'm ready to open which means making a hole in the center. I start to pull the clay out into my right palm, slowly. Pull it over, slowly, until it sticks on to itself. A little pee in there, and they can be uh, burst with a needle just to, to let the air out. So. But, uh, you'd think a pound of clay is easy to handle, but it's surprising how much energy it takes. And it's not just energy from your hands, it's really your whole, your whole body that's working. Like well, the way I'm sitting on the stool now, I'm sort of leaning forward, I'm tipped forward, I'm using my whole upper body, you brace your arms in, and it's all of this that's really applied on the clay. And of course, the more clay that you're throwing, so if you go from one pound to three pounds to five pounds to eight pounds, you need a lot of oomph to do that. Uh, so um, that, that, that takes more work. But it is, it's deceptive, um, the amount of physical energy that is required. Even within those, every type of clay that you, that you use, if it's coming from a different supplier, if it's a different composition, it'll have a slightly different personality. And it'll just feel a little different. It might behave a little differently in terms of uh, you know, how it dries, how it shrinks. Uh, is it better for hand building? Is it better for throwing? So you kind of have this little dialogue with your clay until you kind of get to know its personality. And, and you really have to, you have to listen to your clay. It's, it doesn't work if you just try and impose yourself on it. The clay will tell you. Pots are, uh, are tooled, then I let them dry out. They have to be bone dry before they can go into the kiln. And when I have enough bone dry pots to fill the kiln, then I can do a bisque firing. I just want to scoop out a little bit from the bottom here so that the highest surface is the very, very edge of the bowl, the edge of the foot, so we don't have a, a twirler on the table in my syringe and on my brush and we just sort of feed the brush and rise up the pot. It's a good idea to let the kiln cool to like maybe two three hundred degrees inside before you open it so that there's not a thermal shock on the pots with the cold air hitting them and my lid is heavy so I'm going to bend down and heave up and there we are. And that's pots hot out of the kiln, if you want to come.